right, everybody. Hello, I'm Chris, and uh, let's talk about some uh, exciting list formatting stuff. So we'll head on over to our uh, Warrior Versus site. Once I figure out how to switch. Dang it. Uh, are you guys still there? We're still here. Okay, sorry. Teams keeps crashing on me. I'm losing everything here. There we go. All right, we figured it out. Keyboards are hard. All right, so we're on our horses site, and uh, we're just going to create a new list. You know, the uh, the horses are always uh, cooking lots of delicious things, and thank God Microsoft has created a beautiful template for tracking that in SharePoint. All right, so we've got our uh, recipe tracker here. So we're going to create a recipe tracker. Wow. And what's that? Oh, all right. What? That's I don't know what that was. All Hold right, on, cool. That's what I did. Uh, <laughs> well, that's someone what else I is. I right. have moved on. We have moved right. on. So that's sorry. That was, that was we will also move on. So the idea is we've got a recipe tracker here, right? It's very exciting. It comes with some formats. Uh, we're just going to use that template to begin with. And we're just going to call this uh, recipes. Ooh, recipe. Recipe. Oh, gosh, recipes. That sounds exciting. And then we'll just add a couple of recipes to this list. And then we're going to take a look at what we can do with that, right? So uh, we'll just add, let's take this uh, off. We don't we don't care about this. Let's just hide that column or we don't need a link. But let's add another column, like a description here, we'll add text here, you know, a description of our uh, recipe. We'll call it description. Very exciting. We're going to call it a multiple lines of text, and we'll just save that. All right, so now we've got a beautiful list. It did not remove the link. I don't think it matters too much, but we'll bring that over here. Uh, and now let's add just a couple of items so we can get this going. We'll add uh, soggy oats, and then we'll add, uh, you know, let's call it horse lasagna. That's right. And then, of course, I've already generated a couple of images for these. Uh, somewhere, up in my some images and my horses somewhere. The horses, and then we got the recipes. Here we go, and we got some horse lasagna. All right, no, this is the uh, the uh, smushy oats, perfect. Soggy oats, smushy oats, some kind of oats. All right, so these are some of the AI generated images that apparently don't work here. So that's very exciting. Let's try this again one more time. Ah, uh, perfect. We'll upload some horse lasagna. Well, whatever. <laughs> Uh, let's just exit the grid view and see if that uh, fixed them. Now, somehow my images are broken. It doesn't really matter. We'll skip the images uh, for today. For now, though, let's grab some descriptions, though. So maybe we'll ask uh, AI, we'll ask Bing to help us out, right? So we'll ask it to generate a description for a recipe called uh, Smushy Oats, right? There we go. And uh, so I bring this up because this is a great way to make uh, demo data, right? Uh, so if you're just messing with list formats and you want some some data to generate, right, you can use the old Ipsum, Lipsum, Bacon, whatever it's called, right? Or, you know, you can ask AI and uh, you'd be one of those cool kids, right? Uh, it makes your demo fancy. I'm going to stop responding. We don't need those steps, right? So we'll just grab uh, whatever this is. Perfect. And yeah, we'll just paste that in there. Beautiful. And then let's get one more for the horse lasagna as well. All right, we'll just ask it to generate one for us on horse lasagna. Womp. Perfect. But we'll, we'll paste it twice, apparently. All right. There we go. Just do it. Sounds great. All right. So we'll get that. We'll get a description for the horse lasagna. And then we're going to take a look at some formatting. So one of the things we've been doing recently is we've been showing some fairly advanced uh, scenarios. Right, A couple of weeks ago, we, we took a look at how to make a poll application. Uh, we've looked at all sorts of different types of applications, some advanced formatting things with the for each and the loops and the inline editing. All those videos are available, and I recommend you check them out. Uh, but for our purposes, we're going to go back to basics just a little bit and, and talk about how we even understand what formatting is, right? So we've created this list. We've done cool AI things. So we've checked off our list of uh, being a cool, a or cool demo in 2023 by having AI shown. So boom, check that off. Let me close that Bing guy. All right, and now, so we've got ourselves a list, right? We've got some sample data in it, and we can take a look at how we want to format that, All right? So for instance, uh, if we just go in here, and we're going to go column settings, and we're going to format this column. And one of the things we can do, right, is we can get these nice little wizards, and, and that's okay. For us, we're going to go to advanced mode, and we're going to take a look at what we can do. Now, I have turned on SP Formatter. That is a extension for either Chrome and for Edge. I'll have a link and everything for that and what that does. Uh, and what that does is adds this little box here and makes things a lot easier. Uh, it makes things work really well. But one of the things we're going to do is we're going to take a look at how do we figure out what we can do. 
All right, so you'll notice that we have this kind of IntelliSense, right? We start to type, we see Elm type is suggested here, right? We even can start to see, uh, you know, we can type div and we can type our text content. Now, these are the only things that are really required. We can say, wow, right? We can put in literal text and now it'll always say, wow, we there. So that's pretty cool. Uh, let's make this a little bigger. There we go. Uh, now, how do we know what can go in there? If anytime you are interested, this is actually a link. And if you hold down control and you click it, it's going to open up in a new tab here. And if you wanted to read how to describe your JSON with JSON, good news, you can. Right. So this is a JSON schema file. Uh, don't expect you to, to really read through this too much. But if you're interested in exactly what you can do, this is a great spot to check that. Uh, one of the things I want to point out um, is that not only does it show you, you know, what values are allowed and what are required, right? You can see if you go all the way down to the bottom here, we talk about uh, the only thing that's required is either Elm type or the column format of reference. So that's kind of cool. You can see these kinds of things. But what I think is more interesting um, is expressions. So we have the idea of a property or a value, right? So if we, we take a look here, this is the property, Elm type. This is the value, div, right? Now, for the most part, properties are going to be fixed, right? There's a specific list of what are available there. Uh, there's a couple of dynamic ones with uh, data attributes and with ARIA tags uh, you can check out. But otherwise, they're all kind of fixed. They're always going to be named, and there you go. But the values uh, can vary wildly, right? Uh, for instance, Elm type is you know one of a few, right? If we type in Elm type, all right, we can see that it, it only takes an enumerated value. This is it. This is all you can put in there, and more interestingly, you cannot do an expression. And when I say expression, I mean, well, that's where we get fancy, right? You see there's a definition for expression. Um, and their definition shows an operator is one of these items here, one of our exciting operators, um, or an operand is all these different things, including an expression itself. And then almost everything is either a string or an expression otherwise. So that allows us to say, you know, text content doesn't have to be wow we, right? We can actually put a curly brace and now we get an operator, right? So now we get operator, and we can say, you know, like uh, starts with, that sounds like an exciting operator, or let's do ceiling instead, because that's a little easier to understand. So ceiling just rounds down. So if we do ceiling, the idea of an operator is it always has operands, right? And those are an array of things. And in this case, we're going to say, you know, 45.5. And if we preview that, we can see that it goes up to 46. So let's turn this enhanced formatter on. So we don't have to hit preview all the time, all right? So if we have ceiling here, we could also type instead floor, and now you can see it goes down to 45, but you get the idea here. It's a little hard to read, uh, but this is called the abstract syntax tree uh, style, right? So AST, and you'll see this show up. This is the only thing that's supported if you're doing uh, SharePoint 2019, or if you're using some of the, uh, the rules that generate stuff, you're gonna see this kind of thing. Now this can be rewritten pretty easily um, as just a string, which we'll take a look at in a moment. But it's important to see this and not be too scared of it, because again, you can kind of go crazy. There are some weird things, um, and I'm going to turn on debug mode so we can see some of that weird things, right? So if I type in, uh, you know, almost anything, right? So if I type a number like you would think would work, right? I'm actually told it's not a valid operator, and that's because of the debug mode. I actually can see all of the list of operators I can use. Uh, but some of these in this syntax, I have to actually include the parentheses. Now, why is that for some of them and not for others? And why are some lowercase, some are uppercase? Yeah, you ask Microsoft, right? But either way, that's kind of what's happening. And again, you could have, uh, you know, you could nest these all the way down, which is where they get a little confusing. Uh, alternatively, right, you could just write uh, an equals, and that will indicate we're starting an expression in line, right? So an Excel style expression where we could say, you know, ceiling of 45.5, right? And we see that uh, has 46 over there. Notice again that SP formatter is applying this automatically, right? So I forgot the O. Boom, there it goes. And you can see this is a lot easier to read, especially when you start nesting a lot of these expressions. Um, so I want to make sure I called that out. The other thing to note is how you reference um, other things, right? So this value can also be fancy things, right? So we saw before where we're just like dog, and there's dog. Uh, but we can also do things like, you know, placeholder strings, right? So and this is the SP formatter is really quite a bit of IntelliSense here. Um, so I can see the at current field, which is going to take the value there. Uh, but I could also reference other columns, right? So if I want to take the description and show that, I would put a uh, square bracket and a dollar sign. And again, SP Formatter is doing a really cool thing where it's actually looking at what columns are available on this list and showing them to me here, right? Uh, so 
this guy didn't refresh after that, so let's just go ahead and type in description. But we type in the internal name for a column, and there's the description, right? And that's very cool. Now, if we wanted to do something like recipe, right? Well, that doesn't work, right? Recipe is not found on the data object, and that's because that's actually the title field, right? So these are the internal names. Now, one thing you can do is if someone does that and you want to reference, what is that display name, right? Like maybe you're trying to write in, you know, equals and you're saying title, right, is this thing, right? Uh, I don't know why you would do that, but maybe you're doing that, right? But you don't want to say title because what if they've changed that, right? So now you can quickly change that here and you can reference column metadata instead of a dollar sign. You can put the exclamation point and say display name, right? And then we'll say another plus here, right? And we'll wonder what I did wrong for days and days. All right. I don't know what I did. Is it lowercase? I don't know. Display values, lowercase. Either way, the idea is you can get better data about these things. You can do the placeholder tokens, and you can do these expressions. Um, and it gets really, really cool when you start to combine these things um, and use these to conditionally turn things on and off, to apply styles, and so on. Uh, but the key thing with expressions is to not be too scared with that operator operand stuff and then to be aware of what's available. So one of the ways I like to see what's available is, of course, you can always check out uh, the actual documentation, right? So this formatting syntax reference is the is a document with kind of the bulk of that stuff. You can see all these special string values. I mentioned current field. But so it's going to call it how you can get those sub properties. Um, you know, like saw so the people field have all these extra properties. Very exciting. Um, and then if you come down here, um, you can see this is where again we reference that kind of metadata for the field. Uh, not sure what I typed wrong there, but it doesn't really matter, right? And then this is how you reference internal field names. And again, if you use that debug mode, uh, you can start to see those internal field names. If you use SP formatter, it's going to get even easier for you. And again, with that automatic preview, which is really really helpful. Okay. And then the last thing is you can see uh, the operators. If you come up here, you can see uh, operators. Right, and you can see all of them listed here, along with examples of how do you call each. I said it's the text content, but it's not limited to text content. Uh, almost everything except of, except element type and I think custom action, for the most part, take um, an expression. So again, you can get pretty fancy with some of this stuff, and it's very cool. So now let's take a look at our slides real quick, and we'll wrap it up. So. Again, I want to call it this SP formatter by Sergey Sergey. It's free. It's part of PNP. Check it out. It is awesome. It's an extension uh, for both Chrome and for Edge. So the new Chromium Edge. Um, and it makes things so much easier. I don't generally demo it here because it is an extra install. Uh, but this is what I use to write all my formats, and I highly recommend it as well. All right. And then finally, I've got this. We'll have this linked um, elsewhere, right? So that you can go through these. It's just that documentation is kind of laid out a little bit different grouping, right? So these are the arithmetic operators. And the goal here is to show you just how much power there really is, but also to call out that some things are online only, right? And some things are included in SharePoint 2019. So, so the arithmetic operators, here's our conditions and logic, right? So you can do some really cool comparisons, um, check it with strings and so on. Uh, one thing to note here is a little weird is that if you're that operator operand syntax, you use either a question mark or you use a colon. Don't use if, but you don't use either of those if you're in the Excel expression. I know that sounds a little weird, uh, but just think of it as reading it this way, like if this, then that kind of thing. Okay, so you totally got that. Here's some conversion operators. So there's a way to take in uh, you know, your value. So when you get your current field value, uh, or you grab another field's value, it comes back as the value it is, like so the type. So it's not necessarily a string. It could be a Boolean, right? So it's going to be true or false, or it could be a date, which would mean it's actually a giant number of the milliseconds since uh, 1970, something or other, right? And so you can use these here to convert those between those types of things, including some, you know, locale type items. And then, of course, there's the multi-value and loop operator, so you can jump through. Um, so you've got multi-choice fields or multi-person fields, or if you're just working with a split, or you're doing for each, um, you could do all sorts of cool things there. So these are a little more advanced, very exciting. And then, of course, we have our text manipulation operators, right? So this is how you can change some of that strings around. You want to jump in there, and you can say, you know, make it shout at people by always making it uppercase, um, or sometimes you just want to display it. Right, and you just want to add uh, padding to the beginning, right? So the pad start, a very common use case, right, is to pad numbers so they all line up correctly. The, the fun thing is it accepts a string, so just wrap that around one of those conversion two strings on your number, and you're good to go. And then finally, here's some value extraction operators. So this is how you can actually grab 
uh, some very specific details um, out of a value, right? Again, these can be your calculated values or these can be field values and it makes it very, very cool. So all that to say, this stuff is extremely powerful um, and we've been showing you all sorts of cool, uh, powerful things with it, but I wanted to take it back a little bit and just talk about these expressions aren't near as scary as you think. I think they're actually easier to write than calculated columns uh, everywhere. Uh, just because some of those are a lot easier to write. They're just like, they're mapped kind of like Excel. They're similar to PowerFX and so on. Uh, so check those out. And if you have any questions, just reach out to me. And that's, uh, that's it for me, David.